Hey everybody, Calm here. Now on this channel, in the past, we have talked about a great number of different varied subjects. Everything from tape players and cassette decks to floppy disk cameras and 90 year old film cameras. I have films that do everything from covering the history of nails to the history of the Antarctic snow cruiser, which by the way, just passed 2 million views, which is absolutely insane. But something I've not really ever had much of a chance to talk about or share on this channel is my art. I do quite a lot of drawing and illustrations. Uh, mainly pen and ink and various stuff and I haven't actually really been doing that much of it in a while but I've been trying to get back into it and one of the things I thought I would show off in this video today is my long ongoing project to draw every single building in Scotland. Okay, so not every building in Scotland to do that would need a much larger piece of paper or um, some very small pens. But I am attempting to draw a sort of conglomeration of interesting buildings, landscapes, statues, cultural, historical references from all around Scotland and all stacked together in this giant, fantastical sort of tower design on a big, massive sheet of paper. Now, it works roughly north to south. You're starting with the Orkney and Shetland Islands right up the top. The topmost building actually being the St Magnus Cathedral in Orkney. It's the most northerly cathedral in Scotland and then you sort of work your way down through Sutherland, the Highlands, then the east and west coasts represented on each side and then it starts to swell and spread out as you reach the base but also you're getting into the big cities like Edinburgh and Glasgow and then sort of terminating in the borders area. It's all pen and ink and it's done with a variety of uh, brands from Copic, Stadler, Le Pen, Micron. I I've gone through pretty much all of the sort of fine liner pens. I now use uh, Uniballs uh, specifically. I don't really have any loyalty to a particular type of pen. It's more availability and price, but also most importantly size. I draw, as you might have seen already, on a very small scale and I require pens that are at the largest, usually about 0.1, but then more typically 0.05, and for small details, 0.03. And if I could get smaller pens, I absolutely would. In fact, if you know of any pens, please do leave them down there in the comments below, because I'm always looking for better pens and smaller sizes so I can get more detail in there. The paper is actually pretty standard, 200 GSM paper. It's a gigantic roll that came in a 10 by one meter. Um, it was ordered off of Amazon, cost me about 30 pounds, and I basically just cut it to size. Um, it's about one by two meters in total and uh, it is great because of course you can use this and run with it. It's it's hard enough and thick enough stock so that it doesn't get too battered but you know the corners and the edges are very frayed and very damaged because this thing is constantly being unrolled and re-rolled. It is sometimes in my room, it's sometimes down here in my workshop but um, I try not to be too precious about the entire project. It is at the end of the day meant to be a little bit more of a, a fun kind of sketchbook project that I can keep returning to. A lot of people ask why, which is a fair question, I guess. But the design element, I suppose, comes really from my style. I used to draw a lot of these fantasy castles and other things. And I thought it would be quite fun to see and explore Scotland from another angle, you know, focusing less on the landscapes of Scotland uh, and more from an architectural point of view, interacting in this sort of long portrait style. I really love portrait. Um, I would do everything in portrait if I could. I take the majority of the photos that I take in portrait. I would do this YouTube video in portrait if it wasn't for the fact that the YouTube community would probably exile me for that. But also I, I think it's important to follow a sort of internal logic. It's not all unconnected buildings. I want it to feel as if you could walk from the top to the bottom and working with small pens and tiny details, I hope that you sort of get lost in that world as you're going through it. It does feel like it could go on forever, a bit like a fractal. And um, There is infinite detail that your eyes start filling in the closer you start to look at it. Some of my favourite parts, well, the, the Duke of Sutherland memorial is quite fun because uh, it is one that I suppose you'd have to know the history of that to really understand what it's depicting. But also you've got things like Dunray, the nuclear power station, you've got uh, little shops and things that are hopefully more known to the people who live there rather than somebody who is just seeing it and going, oh, I recognise all these buildings. These are the most famous buildings in Scotland. I, I don't really want it to be like that. I'm trying to pick buildings that are interesting or that have a history in the community or in the local area. That's really easy right now because I'm actually in an area I'm very attuned with. I know the north of Scotland very well. I know the west coast of Scotland very well. And I know Orkney quite well, you know, in that whole area. I also like to try and include things that add a sense of depth to it. So for example, I mean, they are all 3D of course, but something like the Sky Bridge is quite good because it sort of disappears off into the center of the structure. And you can maybe imagine it coming out again at the other side. I also try and make that clear. You know, if that building that you want to see is not represented on there, well, it's probably on the other 
other side of the drawing. And it's hopefully bringing together this idea of it being a 3D object and a little bit like the small details, you might be able to feel like it does just go on forever no matter which way you look at it or how many times you study it. It looks time consuming, I know, but it's actually surprising how fast you can get into a rhythm of drawing. The problem more comes from um, the fact that I'm using real buildings. So I've obviously got to reference those. I've got to go back now and then and check pictures and drawings and stuff like that. I'm not super accurate with it, but I do want them to be relatively consistent. And the other problem is more long term. If you aren't careful, long term mistakes can happen that you don't realize are happening until you take a step back. And it tends to be things like perspective and scale. Scale can often go wrong because if you draw the corner of a building slightly too large, the building next to it uses that as a reference and you get to the end of a street and all of a sudden the building has started to swell in size and the scale has started to go off. But also it's a little bit like if you try and draw or try and write out an entire paragraph by hand without any guidance on a blank piece of paper. And what you'll notice, of course, is unless you're very careful, the lines start to skew, you know, your end of the sentence starts to go up or it starts to go down. And it's because you've got no guidelines to go with. So I do use pencils to try and mark out um, rough perspective lines, horizon lines, um, maybe mark out areas that I need to focus attention on, or maybe just like uh, reserving an area and going like, this is this area. We've got to make sure and try and fill that out. Generally speaking, though, it's just the pen. I just start drawing with the pen and whatever happens, happens. If there is a mistake in a window or a tile or a line, you can pretty easily hide it because of course the drawing is so large. You're never going to make a gigantic mistake that is really going to ruin it in that kind of way. I also keep a pretty extensive list on a till roll of buildings to draw and ideas that come to me. I've got a lot of maps that I go over. Um, areas uh, generally, like I say, are marked out. You're also then having to search through books. I've got a lot of architectural guides from around Scotland that are quite handy just for references and pictures. Also though, so things like historical books might give you Easter eggs and cultural influences to enter in there. And those are some of the most fun because you're not literally drawing them. You're trying to find a way to put an interpretation of that event into the context of this sort of world. It's sort of been an ongoing project. I started way back in 2017, but I've not actually done really that much to it since the start of 2018. And that's really because other projects got in the way, but also because I was actually exhibiting it. I had it in exhibition in Stromness up in Orkney where I used to live. And for a while it was in place in the Drawing Roots exhibition in the Peer Arts Centre as a sort of exploration into the art and the act of drawing. And I thought a big work in progress piece like this would be a really fun way of representing and depicting that, the, the art and the act of drawing. I think that's also why I'm trying to show it to you now because a little bit like how your mind fills in the small details the closer you look, sometimes the potential of something is a lot more impressive than what it actually may become in the end. And I think looking at it now as it sort of slowly crawls down the page is a really fun way to view it and see it before potentially it is ever finished. I don't know whether it will be ever finished, but this idea of the infinite stretching away of ideas as it goes from the, the solidified pen down into the sort of more rough pencil sketches and then just the roughest notes and then disappearing down into the white. And uh, it's an advantage that you get seeing it early on like this in this state. So I'll continue plodding along in my workshop, drawing more buildings, researching more places and sort of fleshing out this world. But I wanted to share it with you early on at the this stage and, and potentially show it to you if one day it is ever finished. I don't really know. It's almost like an ideas board. I just return to it when I have a kind of surge of inspiration or when I fancy doing it. And actually, I sort of spun the idea off into different things. Um, I've done these stacked drawings on specific places, such as Stromness up in Orkney and also my own island of Rassi. So it's been really good fun to, to practice with this and then apply that to other work. And then now and then I'll sort of return to the mothership and carry on doing this work bit by bit and bit by bit. Um, uh, but anyway, I'd better carry on drawing while I've still got some time and maybe I'll share more with you in the future when it's ready. If you live in Scotland and if you have any unusual bits of history or places you think I should introduce or uh, depict in the drawing, please do let me know. And thanks again, as always, for watching. So, uh, yeah, bye bye. Funny story, um, while editing this, I actually found seven postcards um, that I have had left over since the exhibition up in Stromness. They depict a, a small section of the um, of the drawing around my favourite area, which is kind of sky and the sky bridge. And it's got Talisker and stuff like that. This light's quite strong, but you might be able to make it out just there. Now, I thought I would do something um, quite fun with these. 
I've got a website, calmgirls.com, and what I've done, and I don't know how well I've done it, so it remains to be seen whether this will work, but I've tried to set up a shop on there, so calmgirls.com slash shop. If you are interested in buying one of these, I've put them up there. Um, what I will do is they are up there, um, and when you buy one, or if you want to buy one, um, I will put a drawing on the back. I'll, I'll draw all over the back of it. I'll still make it legible enough that uh, you can get an address on it, I can actually send it out to you. And uh, yeah, if you fancy a sort of souvenir, I guess from this video, if that makes any sense, you can have one of them. Um, but there's only the seven of them. If, if it's more popular and there's more demand, I'll put them up there. I don't really sell my work, but I would like to in the future. So I suppose I'm sort of testing the ground with it in some ways. But uh, yeah, just a happy coincidence, really. I'd forgotten that I'd saved these from the exhibition itself. And uh, like I say, they are one of my favourite sections of the actual drawing as well. But like I say, entirely up to you. Um, but anyway, thanks again for watching.